Hey guys, welcome to chapter four. We'll start off uh, this chapter by discussing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of polynomials. So again, in this section, learning objectives are, uh, we want to learn how to add and subtract polynomials and then obviously multiply them. Division will happen at a later time. So before we go on, some core concepts and vocabulary that we'll need, not just for this section, but for really the rest of the course and all our discussions that follow. Uh, a constant is, well, just a number. A real number that you can think of is going to be called a constant from here on out. A monomial is going to be in, invariably just a single term. A single term really means uh, formally that it's a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. So for instance, three is a monomial because it's just a number. X is a monomial because it's just a variable. 3x is a monomial because it's a product of a number and one or more variables. 3xy is also a monomial for the same reason. Coefficient is the number out front, or it's the number being multiplied by the variable or a product of variables. So in 3x, the coefficient is 3. In 3xy, the coefficient is 3. A term is a product of a number and one or more variables. So 3x is a term, 3xy is a term, 3xy times 4x is a term, because all of that is being multiplied together. The degree of a variable is the highest power of the variable we see in a polynomial. We'll see this when we see some examples a little bit clearer. The degree of a monomial is the same thing, but if there's more than one variable, it's the sum of all the exponents of the variables in the monomial. Again, this will become clearer when we see examples. Uh, how do we know if terms are similar or like monomials? The terms have to have the same variables to the same power. So if you have 3x squared and 5x squared, those are like monomials or they're similar terms because the variable x is the same and the power square is the same in both terms. Now with polynomial or polynomials, the, the definition gets to be a little bit murky, but if we sort of break it apart and go slow, it doesn't seem too bad. So a polynomial, first of all, has to be a function, meaning if we graph it, it has to pass the vertical line test. For every input, there's a unique output. However you, you wish to think about polynomials or functions really. And it's a function of the form f of x equals a sub n times x to the n. a sub n is some coefficient. Now, the coefficients in polynomials are allowed to be real numbers. So they could be positive, negative, decimals, fractions, uh, radicals, like with square roots. Uh, it could be e, could be pi, could be any real number that you've thought of in the past. Times x raised to the n plus a sub n minus 1. Now, this is just counting them down. So if the first coefficient is a sub n, the next coefficient is a sub n minus 1, then the next coefficient would be a sub n minus 2, then the next one would be n minus 3, a sub n minus 4, until you get all the way down to a sub 0. Now, if you keep taking 1 away from n, eventually you're going to run out of the number that you started with. So you're just going to be left with uh, a sub 0. That's, this is the constant term. This is the number by itself. Notice that there's no x's attached to it here. Additionally, you'll notice that the power of x keeps going down by one as well. So here we have x to the n, x to the n minus one, the next term will be x to the n minus two, and then so on, until again you get x to the n minus n, which is x to the zero, which is really just one. So that's why you're just left over with the constant term. So the exponents are all, this is the more important part, not to say that the other part isn't important, but uh, in determining whether things are polynomials or not, these are the two distinguishing factors that we're going to be using. We need to make sure that the exponents are all whole numbers. So all these powers of x's need to be whole numbers and the coefficients need to be real numbers. Finally, the degree of a polynomial is the highest degree of all the terms. So remember that the degree is the sum of all the exponents of all the variables. The highest number, whatever that number happens to be, is called the degree of the polynomial. 
Before we get to some examples, let's classify things further. So this language is going to be very, very important. I genuinely hope that you're going to uh, internalize this as quickly as possible. A constant function, f of x equals a sub 0. So remember, a sub 0 is just some constant. It could be positive, negative, decimal, fraction, uh, real. It just has to be a real number. A constant function, we say, has degree 0 because the variable you can think of it as x to the 0. The highest power of x is 0, therefore the, the degree is 0. So an example of that would be f of x equals negative 14. This is just a constant. Now you might say, well, there's no variable attached to it. But remember, x to the 0 can be multiplied by this function without changing anything. So constant functions have degree 0. Linear functions, these are things that you've played with in the past. They look like y equals mx plus b. Now think about what m is. Isn't m a real number? That's now being replaced with a sub 1. x plus b. Isn't b also a real number? So it's the same exact thing that we've dealt with in the past. Now we're just formalizing it in the language of polynomials. So a linear function has degree 1 because the highest power of the variable you see here is just the 1. An example of this, y equals 5x minus 7, or f of x equals 5x minus 7. Hopefully, again, you're reminded of the lines that you've played with in the past. Moving on, a degree 2 function is called a quadratic function. Again, I'm sure you've seen these before or heard that word before as well. We've used it before in factoring quadratics or solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. The standard form of these is... Again, you've seen this before, maybe with just different letters. You've seen before ax squared plus bx plus c. It's the same exact thing. a just gets replaced with a sub 2. b gets replaced with a sub 1. c gets replaced with a sub 0. And again, an example of this is 2x squared plus x minus 9. a sub 2 is 2. a sub 1 is 1. a sub uh, 0 is negative 9. So again, quadratic means the highest power is 2. That's what we see here. A cubic function, so you may or may not have familiarized yourself with these two in the past, but we should know these. A degree 3 polynomial is called a cubic function because it, the highest power is a cube. So again, we have the same exact thing, ax squared plus bx, uh, I'm sorry, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. That's the standard form with different letters. But here, we're just replacing a, b, c, and d with a sub 3, a sub 2, a sub 1, a sub 0. Here's an example of a cubic polynomial that I'm sure you've seen in the past. A quartic polynomial is one that has degree 4. So same exact scenario. We start with x to the 4th, drop a degree, drop a degree, drop a degree until you get to x to the 0. And then you have real numbers as coefficients. So f of x equals x to the fourth plus 2x minus 1. Now before I end this introduction, I want you to carefully observe. Here, we just have the one term. We just have the constant, so nothing really goes missing. Think back to when we discussed straight lines, or when you discussed straight lines for the first time. y equals f of x was also a straight line, the same as y equals f of x minus 7. However, the x term was necessary in order to call it a linear function. Similarly, in order to call something a quadratic, it would still be quadratic if the x and the negative 9 walked away. So if we just had y equals 2x squared, that is still a quadratic function. However, if we just have x minus 9 and the 2x squared vanishes, then it's no longer quadratic. For a cubic, the x cubed is what makes it a cubic. If we toss out the negative x squared and we just have x cubed plus 3x, that is still a cubic function. And lastly, for a quartic function, for a function to be quartic, x to the fourth has to be the degree term. The other terms are not necessary. If they're there, great. For instance, we're missing an x cubed and an x squared term in this polynomial. That's because the coefficients are just 0. And that's okay. The leading coefficient is not allowed to be 0. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that the coefficient of x to the fourth is not permitted to be 0 because it, the quartic function has to have an x to the fourth in it. A cubic function has to have an x to the third in it 
So a sub 3 is not permitted to be 0. Quadratic functions have to have a square term in them. So this leading coefficient, a sub 2, is not allowed to be 0. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll see you with some examples in the next video.